Have you ever unexpectedly received a Christmas gift from someone and then in turn felt obligated to go out and buy that person a gift? It happens, right? My conscience gets to me. Man, that person bought me a gift. Now I have to go out and buy that person a gift. We are programmed to think this way. That's because we are locked into an economic and calculating relationship with other people. You know, you scratch my back, and I'll scratch your back. It's a tit for a tat. Unfortunately, this is how most of us relate to God. We relate to God based on an economic and calculating relationship. Our relationship, though, with God should never, and I mean never, ever, ever be like this. Let's just get this out in the open. God is perfect, period. He needs nothing from anyone. Therefore, everything God does, He does it out of sheer love. God is love through and through. And that means when He does something, He does it simply for the benefit of the other person. There is no quid pro quo with God. And this is what the prophet Isaiah is trying to reveal to us. Here it is. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain and without cost. In other words, God desires to give and give and give. We have a hard time, though, understanding this. So what do we do? And I'm including myself. We start to play games with God. You know, if I do this and this, God, then you will finally love me. You will finally like me. Or if I mess up God, man, you're going to hate me. If that is the way you relate to God, you will never, ever have a relationship with Him. Everyone, it is God who seeks you out. He desires to give you His love. And what we must do is to simply receive it. Do you realize that's what changes us? That is what perfects us. It's God's love, His grace, His power. It's all the same thing. And you know who knew this better than anyone else? St. Paul. you got to remember, St. Paul was not always the good guy, right? He was a Pharisee who persecuted others. For example, Paul was the mastermind behind Stephen's murder. Paul persecuted his fellow Jews. Why? Because they didn't keep the Torah. He even persecuted the first Christians. But what did God do? Did God hate Paul? No. You know what God did? God hunted Paul down, forgave his sins, and then he sent him off to proclaim the love and mercy of God. Paul was so convinced of the gratuitous of God's love that he wrote about it in today's second reading, the letter to the Romans. Here it is. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God. There it is, everyone. Paul is speaking from experience. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not our sins, not our imperfections, not our unfaithfulness. Nothing can, period. It is we who separate ourselves from God. But from God's side, nothing separates us from His love. For God is bigger than our sins. If you think you have to earn God's love, I'm going to be frank with you right now. You are wrong. If you think you have to be perfect in order for God to love you, you are wrong. Rather, receive what God desires to give you. That's His love. It's freely given. 
no cost, freely given. All we have to do is to receive it.